Dr. Dave 101. It is the season once again to welcome in a brand new year and say goodbye to one that was. Sure, we can look at 2021 as being another year of COVID and the politics that go around with trying to get the world healthy and back to normal again. Trust me, I have my own concerns and my own questions that I will probably never get answered. However, 2022 is a year that we can look forward to. You know, I love the beginning of a new year because there is always so much hope, so much pride, so much want and need for change, whether we do it personally or whether we expand it to the people who surround us. When I look into the fields of research, there are a number of things that I want to see happen in 2022 that I found out that I really didn't like about 2021. Let's start off in the paranormal world. The good part about the paranormal world was people were starting to investigate a little bit more. After 2020 and COVID, not a lot of people got out to any haunted locations to go find their ghosties that were going to get them the thrill that they wanted and that they deserve. The positive for the paranormal that I saw, and maybe others will disagree, is I saw a lot of people doing it for fun. They were doing it because they have an interest. They were doing it because they weren't striving for a television show or a pilot or to try and prove something scientific, even though my biggest criticism of the paranormal world has always been there's nothing scientific about the way 99.5% of the investigators actually investigate. No, people just wanted to get out in the field, take their gear out, take their minds off of what is going on in the world, and just go investigate ghosts. To me, it seemed like we saw a lot more fun in the paranormal world. However, it wasn't without its criticisms. One of the biggest shocks that I learned this year, and maybe I was naive to it, not understanding that it was happening before, was the fact that we learned that there are teams across North America that are so egotistical that they are actually trying to lock down locations. So let's say I have a paranormal team and I have a hotspot that was really, really active. And I don't want any other team going in there. What I do is I make up a fake contract And I get the location and convince them to sign it. So that way, no other paranormal team can enjoy what I got to enjoy. I thought that is shady. I thought it isn't right. It is no way in help or helping to expand the paranormal field. You want other people to investigate those locations because. What if they get the same evidence? Now you have something to cross-pollinate with regarding my research to the other person's research. It's good for the paranormal field. It helps bring everything together. But we're not seeing that. And my wish for 2022 is more people in the paranormal field who are out enjoying hunting ghosts will take the time to realize that it's not a competition. Not everybody is going to be the next Zach Baggins. But what you can do is you can enjoy the investigation with others, whether they are individuals or whether they are part of another team. You don't have to like it. You don't have to be a part of it. You don't even have to really do anything about it. Just sit back and enjoy. It's one of the beautiful things that has happened as we learn to relive once again outside without rules, even though some of us are being locked down once again. But my hope is that continues for the paranormal and that people start to get along a little bit more rather than criticize 
for ways people investigate, for way things people may do things differently. But the selfishness does need to be kicked to the side. Those who are trying to ruin it for others need to be called out. They need to be chastised. They need to be shown that that's not the way the paranormal world works. It may not be about teammates and teamwork, but it can be about respect and dignity for other fellow investigators. Moving on to the cryptid world, on Spaced Out Radio, we had the pleasure to meet some great and phenomenal researchers of the cryptid world. We had old friends stop by, like Jody Cook from the North American Dogman Project, and we had new friends, like Duke Sullivan from World Bigfoot Radio, Nate Rudd from WIBS in Washington State, Carter Burchart, and many others stop by here to tell us about their experiences with the legendary Sasquatch. These were people who really opened my eyes to what this creature is all about. Now, normally, you have two opinions of this. It's either a very supernatural creature, or it is some practicing hominid. And after being a little bit upset with the way some researchers were doing things, especially here on the West Coast, where it was a monkey, it was an ape, it was Gigantopithecus, throwing all of these topics out there, we were able to tap into a number of investigators who really, really opened our eyes to the fact that maybe, just maybe, there is something special about Sasquatch. We don't know what this creature is. We can assume. And these gentlemen that we got to know this year understand that some of those assumptions may be very large and grandiose, filled with woo from big feet to the top of their pointy heads. But we were able to learn that maybe, just maybe, there is something to this creature being supernatural. And we learned that we shouldn't rule it out. The disappointing part of the Bigfoot world that we learned of this year was that we learned that it's not a good idea to turn over cases to the BFRO or the Bigfoot Research Organization. Why? Because from what we learned from a number of people that this so-called proud organization of Sasquatch research around the world actually hides behind the word science. And my wish to the BFRO this year is for honesty and integrity and straight up development of the research. For you cannot have research if you are only studying opinion. And my wish for the BFRO for 2022 is that they realize and understand that if somebody has a paranormal experience with a Sasquatch encounter or a UFO encounter or something else strange happen, those reports should not be edited. Tell them the way they are. These are real people's experiences that the BFRO is downplaying. And I know if that were to happen to me, I would never trust the BFRO again if I submitted a report to them only to read it online and noticing that it had been edited. That's not their job. Real research is not editing for your own benefit. Let the stories and the science take you to where the evidence goes. That is my hope for the BFRO. Of course, they're more interested in Squatch This and Squatch That and their television show where every background noise is a Squatch. But the reality is we were able to really, really dig into Sasquatch this year and learn there is way more to this creature 
that we could possibly fathom right now. So my hope for all Sasquatch and cryptid researchers out there is keep an open mind in 2022. What you believe is allowed, but let the evidence take you to where you need to go. Because science, if that's what you were claiming, is only as good as the research that's given. And science doesn't care about your opinion. Now, to the UFO world, which could be the bane of our existence or the shiny objects in the sky that we all want confirmed. I don't have much hope for 2022 in the UFO world. And let me explain why. After the government of the United States passed its new legislation with the defense budget and the military and the Pentagon creating the AOI MSG, I am in firm belief that their entire goal for 2022 and moving forward is to sweep the UFO story back where they feel it belongs, right underneath the rug to outdoors. They don't want this public. They don't want the technology public because they are in a major military industrial complex where they call the shots and the rest of us have to follow suit, whether we like it or not. The legislation that was passed is wonderful because now we get official money being spent on the study of UAP. The sad part about it is the public is still not going to get any further information besides lighthearted reports every six months. That is twice a year. First in June, the next one in December. And both times we will treat it like it's Christmas. And both times we will get socks instead of toys from Santa Claus. That is what bothers me about the UFO world. I do not believe we are going to get more videos, although I hope I am wrong. I do not believe we are going to get more insiders, although I hope I am wrong. I could see Lou Elizondo, after his new book comes out and he does the press tour, disappearing once again from the public limelight because it's just too much. My wish is that it isn't that way. My wish is for more transparency. My wish is for full disclosure, even though in 2022, we know full disclosure is not going to happen. Ladies and gentlemen who are listening, we need to understand that this topic of the phenomena is very real. The government of the United States knows it's real. The governments around the world know it's real. But who is going to give us the truth? If we expect that the last four years has led up to the United States government to tell us what happened at Roswell, what happened at Kecksburg, what happened at Phoenix, and every crash retrieval site in between, we are mistaken. And it's not healthy for us. It's not healthy for the phenomena. And it's not healthy for the research. The main question that we still need to ask in 2022 when it comes to UFOs is why now? We started asking that in 2021. It started to catch on. Then it fizzled. But we've continued the pressure of saying, why now? Why are UFOs important now? We must continue that pressure in 2022 before this entire subject gets swept under the carpet again by the Pentagon, where the men in black become real once again and people start shutting up when we need them to speak the most. That's what Harry Reid was, I believe, trying to protect. Hopefully, the politicians, whether it's Senator Gillibrand, Senator Rubio, Senator Warner, or others, can understand that the military-industrial complex, when it comes to UFOs, needs to be a little bit more transparent. From all of us at Spaced Out Radio, 
to all of you. We hope that you all have an amazing 2022, no matter what the circumstances. We are here for you seven days a week, both on terrestrial radio and on our YouTube channel and other digital formats and podcast formats. We will continue to work hard for you in 2022. My team is ready to put out some of the best broadcasting that we ever have, and we are always looking to improve. But the one thing that we can guarantee to all of you is that no matter what happens, no matter what happens on this planet, whether it's COVID, whether it's UFOs, whether it's inflation, or more government BS, you will always have a safe home here listening to Spaced Out Radio. And that is your Dave 101.